So um, we're definitely looking at how AC2 fits into uh, your policies, your procedures, and your other documentation, your, your, your run books and those kind of things. Um, so let's just dive in. Um, so AC2 is account management. Uh, of course, it's part of the access control family. Um, and it's got a P1 implementation priority, which means it's implemented fairly early in, in the, the implementation of the access control controls. Um, I see here implement P1 security control first. So it tells us, although this is a P1 control and should be implemented uh, early on, um, we do need to implement uh, the uh, P1 control or the um, another P1 control before this one, AC1, which is documenting the policies and procedures. So it, we see in our uh, baseline, for a low baseline, we only have to implement the, the base control, AC2. Um, in a moderate baseline, we have to do AC2 enhancements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then in a high baseline, we have to implement uh, AC2 enhancements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, 12, and 13. Um, there are 13 enhancements in this control, so there are a few in there that um, are not required in any baseline, and they're there for you to pick up and use if you need them, right? And we'll see that. So, for example, um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are, are not defined in any baseline, but they're there uh, in case we need to add them in. So if we need to tailor them in for one reason or another, we can tailor those those controls in, right? If I keep track of my buttons this morning, I won't, uh, <laughs> maybe I won't mess up on bringing these things up. So control description and, and in the control descriptions, we're not, I'm not going to go in depth into uh, the things that, um, are, are like supplemental guides this morning just because there are so many parts to this control, right? So we start out with the organization. These are things the organization will do. So if you're a system owner, um, you know, you're not going to be required to, to do these. These um, are built by the organization, right? But as always, if the organization doesn't do them, the system owner is going to be required to do them, right? So the first one, part A identifies and selects the following types of information system accounts to support mission business functions. And then we have that organizationally defined parameter. So we have to, as an organization, define what types of accounts we're going to have. Uh, a lot of times it'll be stuff like uh, normal user account. We'll have things like administrator account. We may have a help desk account. So we need to go through for the organization and define all of the types of accounts we're going to use, right? Database administrator, network administrator, um, guest user, all these different types of accounts, we need to define them and we need to put them in some documentation. Could be a procedure, a policy, something like that. Um, part B, assigns account managers for those information system accounts. So for all the accounts we define just in that part A, we need to go ahead and assign a manager, right? So someone is responsible for each of those account accounts. And we're going to see why that's uh, important later, right? Uh, then we have, as an organization, we need to define uh, or establish conditions for group and role membership. So if you're, if you're part of the help desk administrator, what are the requirements for that? Um, you know, is, is there, uh, do you have to have a certain background check? Do you have to have um, maybe specific training? What are the conditions to be part of that, uh, those groups or that role? Um, and then Part D specifies uh, authorized users of the information system, group, and role membership, and access authorizations, or those privileges and attributes as required for each account. So again, for each of these accounts we're going to create, we're going to say um, a specific user is actually authorized. We're going to take action, specific action, to authorize people uh, to be part of uh, a group or a role or something like that. Um, and then we're going to define those attributes too, as well, right? Um, and then we get to part E. Uh, requires approvals by someone um, for request to create system accounts. So again, we have a, the square bracket, so that means we have a user, or excuse me, we have an organizationally defined variable. 
Um, so the organization has to define um, who are the people or the roles that can be uh, the approvers of um, the request to create system accounts, information system accounts. So that could be maybe the director of IT, or maybe that could be um, the, the administrator of that um, system, which wouldn't be a good, good thought. Um, so who, who is it that would approve uh, the creation, the request to create the accounts? Someone has to approve that, uh, a manager of some type usually, right? Um, holy cow, which one do we got here? Okay. Part F, uh, creates, establishes, modifies, disables, and removes information and system accounts in accordance with, and then we have again, an organizationally defined variable where we say the organization defined procedures or conditions. So um, when do we create, modify, enable, di disable, remove uh, accounts? What is the policy or the procedure around that, right? Um, you know, it could be in specified in a job book, right? So we could say, um, you know, go look at the Active Directory account creation job book. Um, that's the procedures and conditions we use to um, enable, modify, disable, remove system accounts, right? We want to have a documented procedure, so we always do it the same way and we don't miss any steps, right? Um, part G, monitors, the use of information system accounts. Um, we have to have some way of monitoring the accounts, whether that's automated or it's um, manual. Somebody has to go in and keep track of the accounts. Are they being used? Um, what's going on with the accounts that are created, right? So there may be different levels. So, you know, we may do more specific or more in-depth monitoring of administrator accounts than we do of normal user accounts because they have more privileges and they're they're more dangerous, right? Um, and then part H, notifies managers, and there, there's three conditions here, when the accounts are no longer required, when the users are terminated or transferred, and when the individual information system usage or need to know changes. So, you know, when we're looking at this, there's gonna be, we have to monitor the account, right? So we have to define how that's gonna happen. And then when these things happen, that, that account manager gets notified, right? So when accounts are no longer required, okay, so that there could be justification or reasons for that. Um, when the users are terminated or transferred. Um, terminated is one thing, but transferred is, is dangerous because if you have an employee or a team member that's been on your uh, team or your, in your organization for 20 years and they've had four different jobs, there's the ability that every time they move from one job to another, they've got more permissions or more access to the account. So. We need to make sure when they're, they're transferred from one place to another or their job changes, um, we look at those permissions and those that group membership and take away stuff they don't need so they, they don't get overly permissive accounts, right? Man, it'd be rough to keep track of all of these different uh, pieces here. Um, part I, authorize, uh, authorizes access to the information system based on uh, valid access authorization. So somebody's got to approve it. Somebody's got to, to to have a valid authorization to get an account. Um, intended system usage, right? Um, you know, they, they need a valid reason to be using that account, to be on that system, and other attributes as required by the organization or associated mission business functions. Um, so really, you know, we want to authorize access to the accounts or these accounts based on some, some valid reasons, you know, a valid access authorization. They've got approval to be on the account. Um, they have a need to actually use the system. And then any anything else, that part three, it's anything else the organization wants to add in there. And of course, this will be documented somewhere, right? Um, part J, reviews accounts for compliance uh, with account management requirements um, based on that organizationally defined frequency, right? So we're going to say, um, Maybe normal user accounts get looked at every week and admin accounts get looked at every day or every hour. Um, so we want to review accounts. We have to review them. And that's when really we talk about automation helping us, right? So if we have an automated review process, that's going to help um, kick things up um, to help get through this giant backlog of, of accounts you probably have to look at. 
So we have to, part J, we have to review accounts for compliance with account management requirements. So anything we define in the policy and procedures, anything we've defined so far in AC2, we have to go through and review those accounts to make sure they're in compliance with that. And when we start talking about enhancements, you know, they, um, they may be requirements that we want to, to make sure we're man, uh, monitoring for as well. Um, part K establishes the processing process for reissuing shared or group account credentials if you're using them, if deployed, uh, when individuals are removed from the group. And essentially, we have to make sure that when someone leaves your organization or leaves the group or is transferred, if they had access to a shared or a group account, how do we make sure that they no longer have access to that shared or group account when they no longer need it? So if they get transferred to somewhere else where they don't need access to, to, to that shared account, maybe they, they were on the help desk and they moved to somewhere else, maybe there's a shared help desk group account, uh, we need to make sure that they don't still have access to that when they leave the, the group. So maybe it's as simple as changing the password. Maybe that's what we do. Um, we just need to make sure that that's happening, right? So um, there's a lot of supplemental guidance. I'm not going to go through supplemental guidance. Um, it, it's in the it's in the documentation. You can go check it out if you want. Um, but it just to get through this morning, um, I want to keep rolling because I don't want to take these things to go too long, right? Um, these are related controls. You can check them out. I'm not going to go through each of those. And then we go into control enhancements. We're going to kind of roll through these a little as quickly as we can to get you back on track, right? So AC1, or excuse me, AC2 enhancement one, the organization employs automated mechanisms to support the management of information system accounts. So we have to have, if enhancement one is required, um, then we have to have a automated mechanism to help us manage information system accounts. So this could be something like Active Directory that's going to help us automatically manage those, those accounts, right? Um, Amount um, account management removal of temporary emergency accounts is AC2 enhancement two. Uh, the information system automatically, and then we're gonna have to have a selection it removes or disables. The organization has to define that. Um, temporary or emergency accounts after a certain amount of, of time, right? So we're gonna have to say um, the information system automatically maybe disables temporary and emergency accounts after 30 days or something like that. So that's gotta be defined by the organization so we need to write it down somewhere. So AC2 enhancement three, uh, dis disable inactive accounts. So the information system automatically disables inactive accounts after a certain time period, right? So we have to, as an organization, we have to define that time period. So when, it, when someone doesn't use their account for say 30 days or 45 days, the information system should automatically disable that account. So. Um, things in Active Directory, you can go through and um, build scripts or build processes, automated processes that will go through and look for accounts that haven't been used in a certain amount of time, and it will disable them. That's what we want to do with three. Uh, AC2 Enhancement 4, the information system automatically uh, audits account creation, modification, enabling, disabling, and remove, removal of accounts and notifies someone. So normally notifies the manager, but that's going to be up to the organization to defy, define who gets notified. So th this should be automatically done. So it's automatically auditing the account create when accounts are created, when accounts modified, when it's disabled, and when it's removed. And then that notification should go to someone. And a lot of times it goes to maybe the administrator and the account manager that hey, you know Jim Broad's account has been created. Now it's been modified. Permissions have been added to it. Um, now it's been disabled and now it's been removed. So, uh, AC2 enhancement five, the organization requires that users log out when, um, there's a, a, a defined period of inactivity or another reason to log out, right? So we normally define this in our policies and procedures. Um, the organization requires that users log out when they leave their workstation area or um, they leave for the end of the day or something like that. When when do we require users log out of their accounts, right? So we have to define that, a time period or a description when to log out, right? So maybe they have to log out at 5 o'clock, whether they're still working or not. Um, that's up to the organization. Um, 
dynamic, dynamic privilege management is AC2 enhancement six. Uh, the information system implements the following dynamic privilege uh, management capabilities. And that's gonna be um, an assignment, uh, a list of dynamic privilege management capabilities. So do you have um, the ability to do dynamic account management? So this would be, is there um, something that, that automatically does things, automatically moves uh, accounts around or dynamically changes the way an account is used. For example, if a user is normally working nine to five, does the, does the system have the dynamic capability to at, you know, 501 disable that account? Um, so, or, or remove those permissions so they can no longer uh, be working. So, you know, that way we can uh, put more control on the way these accounts are used. A lot of times these are privileged accounts. We want to make sure that, you know, if something happens, um, we have we have protections for it, right? Um, AC7, uh, AC2, man, AC2 Enhancement 7, um, role-based scheme. So the, the organization establishes administrators and administers privileged accounts uh, in accordance with role-based access schemes that uh, organize all uh, organize allowed information system access uh, and privilege to into roles. So we're just saying we put privileges and roles, and then we put people into those different roles, right? And then we mo monitor the privileged role assignments, and then we take a, a, a organizationally defined action when the privileged role assignments are no longer app appropriate. So you know we we're going to create um, privileges or accounts based on roles. So we're going to build roles for privileged users, right? Um, and then we're gonna monitor those accounts and then we're gonna take a defined action when the, the roles are no longer action, are no, no longer appropriate. And a lot of times that's, you know, removing the account, right? Or removing the role. Um, AC2 Enhancement 8, Information System Creates, and then there's gonna be a, an assignment of an organiz organizationally defined information system account dynamically. So, um, if you have this enhancement, there are accounts that may be um, created dynamically, right? Um, so this is a lot, of, a lot of times in service-oriented or cloud infrastructures. When something happens, like a new server is created, dynamically an account is created. So uh, a, a user account or admin account is created or a trust relationship is built dynamically uh, uh, when, those things, when those things occur, right? Uh, AC2 Enhancement 9, the organization permits the use of shared or group accounts that meet whatever the condition is we're going to set for the organization. So if we're using shared or group accounts, we have to define conditions for establishing shared or group accounts. A lot of times maybe there's a secondary uh, account login, right? So you have to maybe log into your account and then maybe log into the, the group account so that there's, there's some type of um, logging and auditing of that account. Uh, AC2 Enhancement 10, the information system terminates shared or group account credentials when members leave the group, right? So um, if you have AC2 Enhancement 10, and as we talked about earlier, this is the one that was not required for any of the baseline, pro baseline profiles. So if we add this one, we're saying the information system terminates those group accounts or the shared account credentials when a member leaves the group. So it's not just changing the password anymore. When someone leaves, this account is getting terminated, right? It's, it's gonna go away. Uh, AC2 Enhancement 11, um, the information system enforces a uh, organizationally defined circumstance or usage, usage condition for uh, organizationally defined information system accounts, right? Um, this one, it, it, it's weird because it's just like a, a organizationally defined variable for an organizationally defined variable, right? So maybe we have usage conditions like um, administrative, uh, you know, domain administrative privileges um, can only be used um, during normal work hours, right? So that's what we're saying. Um, we're defining criteria for very specific accounts, right? Um, for, you know, maybe we're saying um, 
we can only use emergency accounts and, and you can maybe even do this by uh, location, right? So we can only use emergency accounts um, if you're in the, the emergency operations area, right? So those accounts can only be used in that geographic area, right? Um, so usage conditions. Uh, AC2 Enhancement 12, the organization monitors information system accounts um, for atypical usage. So we have to define what is atypical as an organization. And then we're going to report the usage of information system accounts um, to someone. Who does that get reported to, right? Um, so if we use, you know, we're reporting atypical usage of information system accounts, that gets reported to someone, maybe the manager of the account and also maybe the security operations center. So we're gonna have to define what is a typical account usage. What does that, what, what do we, what does that mean in our organization? Yeah, you know, maybe it's, you know, excessive downloading, like moving a lot of data is, is uh, a typical, atypical account usage or logging in from different areas of the country is atypical. Maybe we have a, administrators that always log in from Virginia and something atypical is they're logging in from Maine. Uh, we have to monitor that and then we have to report it to someone if we see that happening, right? And our last enhancement for AC2, I know it's been a long run, um, the organization disables accounts of users uh, that pose a significant risk within the, a time period we need to define of the discovery of the risk. So if we find out that uh, an administrator, um, they're, they're suspected of, um, of something and, and they're being terminated, then maybe that's the high risk, and maybe we've got, um, you know, five minutes to dis disable the account. Um, or if somebody shows up on a, a list of uh, of known uh, accounts and passwords, maybe there's um, justification to disable that account right away. Um, terminated employees are a big, big reason for doing this. If we have a hostile terminated employee that has admin privileges, maybe we've got within, you know, five minutes or an hour, we have to disable those accounts, but uh, we have to define that time period. If, if there's significant risk to the organization, and obviously if you're in the government, it could be all the way up to the nation, um, we have to define what's that time period. So those are the basic run through of AC2, the control itself, and the 13 different enhancements. It wasn't a real, real deep dive. Well, it was kind of a a medium deep dive into the, the control and the enhancement. Hopefully it gives you more um, insight on the control, but oh, I hope it's helping you. That's, that's why I get up early to do these. Hopefully it's helping spread the word. Um, these controls are put in place, they're common sense a lot of times. Um, they're put in place to protect the system, to protect the data, um, and, and to keep us moving forward, right? So hopefully you like the videos. If you do, like and subscribe, obviously. Um, that helps me get more traction to do more things. Um, hit the bell. That'll let let you know when new things come out. And trying to get these out every day, so maybe that bell's going off all the time for you. Um, leave the comments below. We need the comments because then that tells us if we're doing the right thing, lets me know what you guys want to hear. And uh, other than that, be safe out there, and I will see you tomorrow.